Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the Auto Convert Texture and Material results for Character Creator's iRay Render plugin. We'll briefly look at the various render settings and how adjusting them will change your final results in the iRay Render. If you're new to the iRay Render plugin, it's important to remember that all of the materials you apply to your character or prop in Character Creator will automatically be converted into iRay format and will show up in the iRay material list. Here you can see there are two materials as part of our prop on the right here assigned to the cube area and the sphere area separately. If we go to the iRay Render tab, we can see those same materials in the list here as well. You'll see that they're both set to Auto in the MDL column with a preset of Universal PBR. Let's take a quick look at adjusting the texture maps of the cube material first. If we open the Adjust Color panel with the base color selected, we can brighten or darken the overall color of the cube and you'll see the resulting automatic update in the iRay Render preview window. It will almost look like ash. To further brighten it, we can click on the Blend Texture channel and pump up the brightness on that as well. Let's take a look at the sphere area next. This one has a displacement map, and if we want to enhance the effect, we can use the overall strength slider below the texture maps, which will result in a much more extruded surface both in iClone and on the iRay render. Now it looks almost like drying lava. If we take the brightness level of the glow map down by using the adjust color panel again, we can cool off that lava to make it look like it's nearly solidified. Increasing the blend value will keep that lava piping hot and it will begin to look like the surface of the sun in the iRay render preview window as a result. Let's take a look at a few other auto convert results when we adjust the texture maps of our prop on the left. Adjusting the brightness value of the roughness map higher will give the cube a rougher looking surface, while bringing it lower will exhibit a much more polished and reflective surface. The same goes with the metallic map. If you bring the brightness of this one down, your surface will become less polished and appear rougher. Use these two texture channels to balance out the look you want. You can see if we select the sphere now that the opacity texture channel will also auto convert. If we have a brighter value, it will make the lines more solid and therefore slightly brighter. Whereas if we take that brightness down, the lines will become much more faded. The base color map here is just a simple blue texture. So if we take the strength down on that, it will revert to white and therefore you'll see this result also translate automatically to your iRay render. If you double click the strength parameter text, it will go back to the default value. The tiling offset will also automatically update to your iRay render as you can see here. We can even once again go up to the opacity map now and invert it, creating a cool effect with floating swirly things as part of our sphere. We can then take the tiling back to 1 for an inverted version of the sphere we started out with. If we deactivate the IBL in our iClone scene, you'll be able to see a much more pronounced glow effect in both our iClone viewport in addition to a much more accurate and subtle glow effect in our iRay render preview window. Let's reactivate it for now and move on to our material settings. In material settings, you can tweak the base color of your render directly by using the diffuse color swatch and selecting from a myriad of colors. If we choose a darker yellow color, we can simulate the appearance of gold. We can also reduce the level of opacity in combination with self-illumination in order to create a much less noticeable swirl design on our sphere. Keep in mind that alpha threshold is supported here and is used for the gradient opacity texture. However, shadow threshold is not supported. Reflection and refraction are also not supported and two-sided will also have no effect since iRay always renders in two-side mode. Let's take a look at tessellation now, which is the only effect on actual displacement. I have a wall that uses tessellation here, and I'm going to max out the strength value before heading down to the tessellation section. Here I can adjust the multiplier, which essentially strengthens the tessellation effect as you can see here. The tessellation level slider will determine the amount of detail that the tessellation will have. 
If tessellation level is down and multiplier level is high, you'll see a slightly different effect. Notice however that the results in the viewport are also being mimicked in the iRay Render Preview window. You can also adjust the grayscale base value to determine the initial level of extrusion for your tessellation. By adjusting the strength of the actual displacement texture map in your texture settings, you'll find a result similar to what would happen if you increase the multiplier value in the tessellation settings. Then you can take the initial grayscale base down to make the column even thinner. Finally, let's look at how the iRay Render plugin will auto-convert substance materials. The genes shown here are embedded in Character Creator and the flame icon in the thumbnail indicates they contain a substance material. Let's activate the appearance editor for our genes and take a look at the material type. If we switch this to metallic, it will automatically populate with chainmail and we'll have what looks like a risque sort of mesh pants. We can adjust the transform values of our pants then to create some pretty weird and nifty looking effects. The red section of our material's color ID determines the belt area of the mesh. We can make that more metallic as well by repeating the same process. We can add a cool looking screw strip decal on here as well and adjust the transform position in order to make our pants even more freaky looking. That's about all there is for this tutorial guys. Just wanted to give you a brief introduction to the various parameters that you can play around with in Character Creator and how those changes will be auto-converted into the IRA Render plugin. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com for more info. And I hope to see you in the next video.